Hey, welcome to episode 171 of the Brigadier's Beer Comics and the Sort of Geekery Podcast. I'm Jeff, and I'll be joined very soon by Andrew once I find him, once I've left. But um, yeah, we've got a really special podcast this week where we are going to be together and we're going to be not doing that thing with the different screens. We're going to be in a pub. We've been invited to a tasting of a new lager from Spay Valley Brewery based in Keith, but for tonight they're going to be um, doing a launch of their new lager in Edinburgh's Froth and Flame. So I'm going to go there just now, I'm going to go meet Andrew, we're going to have a couple of drinks, we're going to review the beer in person, hopefully we're going to get to chat to different people if that's available and just have a really good night. Try different beers, talk, chat comics, chat geekery stuff as normal, but just in a different environment, very much like anybody that's watched some of our later podcasts, earlier podcasts, not later podcasts, how can you watch any, if you watch some of our earlier podcasts, it's stuff that me and Colin used to do right at the beginning, almost four years ago, and we found out that next week is going to be our fourth anniversary episode, which I didn't realise, we've been doing this for four years, but obviously COVID changed up the way we did things, and we had to do the thing in boxes where everyone was in their own individual webcams, we're trying our best to come away from that as much as we can, because it was more fun this way, hopefully that's reflected in how good this week's podcast is, um, so yeah, Bring on the beer. So yeah, we're at the Frothin' Flame. I'm joined by David from Speyside. Speyside, Broughton and Hill Community Breweries. So we're a small group of three breweries. Excellent. So uh, what are those three breweries? Because they're, they're all favourites. <laughs> yeah, so um, we amalgamated as an organisation just under a year ago and um, we still run the three breweries very, very autonomously. Uh, each has their own head brewer, each has their own distinctive style. Um, and then as a commercial organisation, we look to um, we consolidate, you know, leverage our uh, assets um, in different ways behind the scenes. So it's all very much individual breweries. And Broughton is uh, founded in 1979. A uh, relatively traditional brewer, um, first uh, independent craft brewery in Scotland. Uh, the time it was founded, it's got a lovely backstory. Probably another Broughton backstory uh, better than the others. But um, at the time when it opened, there was lots of uh, closures going on within the brewing world, particularly worldwide across Scotland. And Broughton opened in 1979, which, if you're a music fan, was just at the kind of tail end of the punk movement. And uh, although the, uh, the younger family who opened it are quite, um, you, you wouldn't describe them as, as street punks, <laughs> but uh, they were actually sort of punks in their own way because they reversed the train, they did something that was against the grain, pardon the pun, and uh, they opened a brewery at a time when lots of others were, were closing. So that's the first brewery in a gripper. The second one is Spey Valley, which is uh, based up in uh, Speyside, and it's got a lovely story. It was uh, David, who's one of my colleagues, who uh, founded it uh, just 10 years ago, and um, at the time that uh, he founded it, we were very much pushing on um, the, the whole space side opportunity and uh, the way that we the way I describe it to people is that um, you know you tried a whiskey from space side now's a chance to try a beer from space side so whiskey's a bit like a snow plow um, so that's the, uh, the, the Spade Valley Brewery and um, it's style of beer um, there's some fun beers, uh, Space Cadet, which is an IPA, but we've also got a number of really, really nice uh, barrel aged um, beers. And what we do with them is that we put the coordinates of the, um, the distillery that the cask came from on the bottle. Um, so it gives quite a unique angle, quite a unique selling story. Um, took me a while to figure it out because <laughs> latitudes and longitudes <laughs> are, are not my, my, uh, my, my forty. And um, we then have the Alchemy Brewery, which is in Livingston, and uh, that was uh, founded in 2013. 
and um, established a really nice reputation in Edinburgh uh, and uh, Central Belt and uh, brewing uh, slightly different, slightly edgy uh, cask beers and um, in the last a uh, few months we are doing a little bit with collaboration, so we've got this beer here, which is a collaboration, cheers everybody, which cheers. is a collaboration with uh, Simple Things Fermentation, and uh, they're a Glasgow based brewery, and there was a kind of home and, a, home and away leg to the collaboration, and um, we uh, brewed this one, it's a 70 shilling, sort of bottom end of a Scottish heavy style beer, 3.7%. Uh, it's got a wee bit of coriander yeah, in it. I don't know if you're not There's a lot going on there. Do you taste the so coriander? Yeah, you can definitely smell it. Like, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. So, so in what they, Anne could probably tell you a bit more, so I'll call you Anne. Um, but the customer reaction to this has just been brilliant. It's been brilliant. This is our second collaboration this year. The first collaboration we did with Uto Garam, it was a nice, a nice rum cask mm -hmm. uh, aged dark ale. Um, and then, as David said, the seventh shilling with simple things fermentation. And again, two days with just limited editions with 30 casks first time with the Matuga Rum DMC and 40 with uh, simple things fermentation. And we sold out in two days. It's just that appetite for something that we be different. And the people who have seen before yeah, and just a limited edition seems to really trend at the moment that if you, you know they know that it's only going to be well, I certainly didn't realize those collaborations were going on and we talk about quite a lot our, our local um, is where we probably get the most exposure to craft beer. Yes. Um, commercial and the firm, and we'll, we'll, we will um, certainly um, Charisma by Alchemy is a personal favourite. Um, obviously, in all the sort of spaces we read this as well. And just the idea that. Um, like, Space Age, Space Age is like a, a brewery I, I've got a lot of time for, yeah. so we're alchemy, so the idea that like, they, they brew is a lot of great time are, are, are working together is, is, as a consumer is really, really exciting. And there, there's quite a lot of um, interesting opportunities that um, we, we're looking at in the next few months, so you're probably aware of the uh, UCI Bike Festival, which is going to be in Scotland in um, I think it's August, and uh, we're going to do a special beer for that uh, because it's, there's a lot of stuff going to be around blind dress. Yeah. So we've got a beer lined up called On Your Bike, um, originally named. <laughs> and um, we also have um, a couple of other uh, interesting things. We've got one which is a guava and blood orange IPA. Yeah, and see, and um, we, we can try that. Oh, so the first story. Uh, some of that. Um, and I, I think we're going to call that Guava Lava Ding Jong. But we're still working on the title for it. I think that's the nice thing about having the three different brands. You can do such different beers and mm. different styles, like the guava, guava lava dingo, guava the rum DMCs, etc. But with a nice little name from the brand, whereas the more traditional instances we found, especially for the festival season down south, if they were having a particular Scottish area, they could get three completely separate brands from you know, one, one source. Yeah. One source. Yeah. But we can have a lot of fun with it as well because if we just each pup has like your friends regular can take the two different brands, but there's certain ones that are maybe a younger funkier brand for some better. Some others it's a really nice drink show. And when especially when we're doing the collaborations and the limited editions, we can have a lot of different fun with it in different styles and have your different shiny and different areas. That's quite interesting. So is that is that something that can happen when you're mentioning there sort of like, sort of um, Tradition, like the more traditional brewery, and then the more sort of let's try something random like Guava Brewery. Um, but within those three, within those like, breweries, is, is there a lot of like I'm going along to Alchemy for the day to, to pick up some things? Or, the, the brewers do swap, yeah. they do swap, and they get to they pick up a lot of different instances from each other yeah. and a lot of different styles because we have Ian Derek Broughton with a very traditional Ian Derek Broughton, and I think the chance for the Alchemy to come down and down from the Valley, just having a different chance. It's really good. 
Yeah. And we've all, we've all learned uh, on the on the journey, so um, that that's been fun. And you know, I think most people who, in fact, just about everybody who works for our business is really passionate about beer. Yeah. So um, you know, we're, we're a commercial organisation, you know, but um, I think if you're able to. Uh, you know, work in an environment that you like and it's about fun and you know, I always say to people that um, you know, I, I never made it as a football and I never made it as a Formula One driver. I didn't get the gig as the guitarist in the clash, but I get to be involved in creating beers and people try them and enjoy them, so Best of all. Yeah, I think in hindsight I don't know who I who, who, who my hero is in this situation. Well, I'm still the clash one, still, you know. <laughs> Could have been, it happen. Um, I won't keep you because obviously there's folk coming no, in. No. What in? So obviously, th this is this is quite a big for you guys. But what's, what's coming up? Yeah, well, tonight's just a bit of fun. Tonight's just to um, invite one or two of um, people, people in the trade who maybe uh, don't know our beers or don't know that much about our organisation. Just a chance for them to come along, try some of our different beers. Very, very informal. Um, and uh, we're going to repeat this. So, what have we got coming up in the sort of short term? We have got more collaboration brews. Uh, we're going to be uh, giving uh, Beer Space Cadet a big push around the fringe. Um, there's a lot of Space Cadets in Edinburgh Fringe. <laughs> so, um, we're going to bring a, we're going to have a few more. Um, we've got our new Space Side Lager, which uh, we kind of softly launched a few months ago, and we're just starting to put that into one or two pubs. We'll put some export orders for it as well. It's going to Italy in a couple of weeks. And um, behind the scenes, uh, we've been working on the gin, which is uh, nice. Um, Hans will probably like tell you more about the gin than I could, because I'm not an expert in that area. And we've got one or two other sort of new and different ideas. And, um, you know, we just want to uh, keep pushing um, one of the nice things about the way our brewery works now is that Broughton was very strong on bottled beers and cask beers and the other alchemy was reasonably strong in cask, a bit of keg and some uh, sort of smaller bottles and the Spey Valley Brewery was mostly keg and small bottles so there's virtually no crossover between what we do so the, some of the kegs that have been brewed at Spey Valley we've been able to introduce those to what were cask customers and some of the keg customers were able to introduce cask food so that's been really nice and everybody's been pretty positive about it so far. It's pretty cool that it, 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 from what you guys are saying, there's sort of a proper like, collaboration as well, like, yeah. like, like, equal partnership and share yeah. uh, uh, resources and it's the and then just a couple of months in, you know, there's actually three completely different brands, three completely different identities, and they actually sit together really, really well. It's been, it's been good. It's that shared vision, isn't it? It's like, we, we all want the same thing, regardless of identity, it's all the same. It's always really important. Shared vision, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whatever that is. It's always really important. No, people actually didn't find, man. The, 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 the vision is about beer. The vision yeah, exactly. is about beer. The vision. And, you know, what, one of the things I like is... Um, on a personal level that I've done a little bit of research on the history of brewing in Scotland and um, if you went back a hundred years ago I think there was about 40 breweries in Edinburgh alone and there was about 100 in Scotland and then it, it sort of died down and um, now you know you've got a resurgence it's very challenging at the moment commercially with the economy but you're back to having um, lots and lots of different breweries and you know that one of the big things for me is that you might not like a particular beer or a particular brewery but there is now a beer for you know whatever you your particular style is and I think that's great you know not only just drinking sort of fizzy liquids it's a sort of light golden colour that's get you know an American or a Spanish or a French joke surrounding it so you know it's real authentic and rude so um, 
I think that's really good to see. And it's, it's an important part of the economy as well. Um, you know, because breweries are you know relatively high value. You know, when you set up a brewery, you need to, you know join us plumbers, fitters, electricians. So there's a lot of uh, good things that go into the economy. So you know, we're, as, as an organisation, we're never afraid to sort of you know um, you know put the message out. You know, to to um, politicians and such like the importance of brewing and the importance of creating conditions that help them that be choice and you know help organisations like us to be successful and grow. Well, certainly, like you know, the politicians particularly, that's something that we've noticed. We've got a couple of our listeners, Neil um, Bailey, who's a, a, one of our good friends actually, he's also um, he's a councillor up in Aberdeenshire. Mm-hmm. That's something that he's always talking about. He's like, really passionate about. He's, like, he's, he's, he's from a corner of the rock right now. So he's not too far away from the you know, Space Valley and, and, and the whiskey trade. So he's, he understands the importance that these things have to our, to our identity. To our, Economy to culture, you know, so. it, it would be wonderful in 25 years if we had, um, you know, a, a beer trail the way that you have the, the whiskey trail. There's a little bit of it, but you know, it's a bit. It's, it's got a long way to go. It's a great, it's a great marketing opportunity. Let's work on that, guys. That sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, yeah, we, we, we'll leave you to so they're getting busy here. It's, it's really speaking to you. Yeah, I could thank you. Yeah, I've been talking here all night. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you, myself. Um, my comic review this week. We often in the Brewgators get asked to review up and coming stuff, and um, we love to do it because it's free comics, but also it means we get to check out what's happening in and about sort of the indie comic realm, which is often times more exciting than the big sort of major comic creating publishers such as Marvel and DC and then even Image and stuff so like I like to just see what's going on about if you want to send me stuff to review I will if you want to send me stuff to read um, that's even better um, but I'm looking at a uh, Punk Droid Volume 1 which uh, launched on Kickstarter today I will make sure the review is in the comments somewhere um, but you need to check it out it's from Unpopular Comics and Christian Douglas um, a friend of the podcast has asked us to have a look at this so uh, the anthology series that has been put together arises um, from like reflecting on the current power of technology, automation, social networking and virtual reality and discuss like to what extent do we have control over these, um, what extent do massive corporations have um, and what are their interests regarding using these technologies for their benefit. Um, asks questions such as, you know, are we consumers all products are guinea pigs, are we a database, are we beneficiaries, or are we just affected parties? Um, it's asking questions like to what extent do we live in slave without knowing, you know, sort of proper matrix stuff, um, or as Huxley anticipated in, in Brave New World. Uh, we're looking at the, it's uh, an anthologist question, such things as the ethics of artificial intelligence, the consciousness of being, uh, what what are the lives of AI going to be like? You know, we, we we talk about AI quite a lot on the podcast, actually, and particularly around about AI art. But actually, as AI becomes more and more advanced, you know, what role does that have in society, and what sort of moral issues are discussed and will be discussed in the coming years? Um, are there limits to that technology, or is there limits to virtual reality technology? Where where is this all going? Um, so they wanted to discuss these and other incredibly current issues in the stories within Volume 1. Um, and I was lucky enough to get three stories from this 100-page anthology. So I got to see about a quarter, just in a quarter, between a fifth and a quarter of the book. Um, and I'll be having a look at them and talking about them very, very quickly. first story that of the three that I read on there is um, a story called Partitions, which I really, really enjoyed. It was about an, a, a robotic android rabbit called... Alexander, are androids robotic? I don't know. It's about an android rabbit, right, called Alexander, who's been trying for years to find his um, owner, Eliza. And when he finds her, she's on this like, mysterious medical ship. And um, in one of those like glass tubes where, like, I don't know, the, like the sci-fi ones, like stasis water and shit, right? Which should cool. Um, and uh, he's trying to pull her out of um, the ship's mainframe by... Um, interacting with her as if he was the rabbit from 
Alice in Wonderland and he's just trying to like convince her to leave Wonderland with him um, and yeah it just the pursuing crisis it's just really really interesting um, the AI on board the ship also has different thoughts and feelings on this so um, yeah it's just an exciting um, kind of really pacey you know it was about 10 pages long really pacey um, it told the story I wanted to tell I want more it reminded me of something I would have picked up in 2000 AD and I'm like oh I want it for the next week. And that's often the issue with these anthologies, actually, is you find something that you really latch onto and then you're like, oh no, where'd I go with this? Um, that was a really cool, uh, that was a really cool piece of work. It was um, written and write, written, sort of writing an art from Mary Bellamy, who is a graduate, um, is a graduate illustrator um, from LA. Um, and has worked on uh, significant properties such as My Little Pony, done some work with Marvel, done some work with DC, done some work with Ghostbusters, Adventure Time, and Rick and Morty. Um, and they have um have been uh, the assistant animator on Acme Fireworks' Drew Carey Green Cash Show at Tit House Incorporated. Um, done illustrated thousands of artist cards for official sets and has been published in more than two hundred fifty books, some distributed internationally. So yeah, just really enjoy, <laughs> like. Uh, Mary, a uh, creator of Calibre, and this is shown in what's a really um, fun little story. The story I picked up was by independent comic writer Christian Douglas. It was called The Girl Who Wanted to Be Real, and he had art from Sergio Rios. So uh, this was an interesting story where um, a, a, an engineer called Geppetto has put together... Um, He's put together an android, which which um a female android. So it's supposed to be a spin on Pinocchio, the call Pinocchio. And he has built this android to try and bring about balance in an ongoing conflict between humans and androids that has ruined all society. So that this first sort of section of the story, I think it's gonna be hopefully lean on to something a bit bigger, and I'll ask Christian about that later. Um because I thought it was really interesting. Um quite a lot of plot packed into quite a, a tight little story. It was only about five or six pages. Um, maybe we'd like to have seen a wee bit more sort of um, flashbacky stuff in this story, but actually it was really good. It set, um, set a very good, um, set a very good starting point and ended with a nice wee twist and a, a bit where we're going to see um, hopefully an ongoing story, which I will pick up if it comes out. So yeah, we're two for two on Anthologies that introduce new characters and new concepts. So this anthology is kicking ass as it sounds. So it was called The Urge. So The Urge was a bit dark actually, a bit darker than what I normally would read. Um, and I didn't really know what was happening with it. Um, but again, written by Christian Douglas. So Christian Douglas wrote two of the three stories I read. Um, and actually totally two different two different stories. Um, this one was a much, much darker kind of story. We had a obviously Christian doing the writing, and we had Carlos Lopez on art. So it was a beautifully drawn piece of work. Um, very, again, kind of like, um, reminded me of like a one-off 2000 AD. I need to start reading 2000 AD again. That's the takeaway from this, is I wanted to follow up these stories. This read more like one of the sort of terrifying tales that you would get in, or one of the one-shots that you would get in 2000 AD, but really good, about a guy who is dealing with a mental illness, is de dealing with some sort of addiction, um, it's like a need, an urge, obviously. And he has tried loads of different things, including therapy, to get rid of this urge. And this, as the story sort of progresses, we learn, out what the, we learn out what this kind of urge is and how he goes around trying to get through that addiction and in a, in a way that he feels isn't hurting other people. But as this anthology is discussing, you know, if we're, if we're looking at things like artificial intelligence, are we looking at, like, at what stage does artificial intelligence become just intelligence that um, needs to be respected and needs to be um, treated with the same amount of respect and, and we, we um, what do you think, what's the word I'm looking for? Respect and in integrity that we would give all life. Um, apologies, that's not the right word. But yeah, it's a really interesting story, really dark, one and done, um, beautifully drawn. Um, I think uh, that was the one thing I took away from this, is Carlos Lopez definitely has got a future. So please check that out. 
Hi there folks, it's Colin, one of the original Brewgooders here Just stepping in this week to help out with doing some comic reviews So let's have a little look at some of the books that I picked up at the comic shop this week uh, So first up is The Ambassadors um, This is written by Mark Miller, drawn uh, by Frank Quitely So very much um, a Scottish theme here Superpowers story as you can see on the front cover, 8, mil, 8 trillion people, 8 billion people, whatever, um, and only six can have superpowers. Um, so, a bit of a, an odd kind of story to start with, very different kind of from your usual kind of uh, superpower stories, um, but it does seem that, that there are some sort of uh, secret government experiments to give people superpowers. There is also a mysterious city um, hidden away. Um, in the Arctic, um, so not a lot given away in this first issue, but it certainly looks very good. Um, also picked up this week was The Nasty, which is John Lee's uh, latest horror uh, comic. What's this about? Well, basically there's a lad who has a, an imaginary friend who happens to be um, a slasher from a movie. Um, and it's also about video nasties. So back in the sort of 80s, there were a few notorious uh, films that were called video nasties, which were particularly, um, you know, horrific at the time. And they caused a bit of a sensation in the kind of press. Um, and were some of the, these these. Uh, videos were banned uh, so this is a horror story based around that where um, a local video store gets a hold of um, a cassette of one of these video nasties um, but it might actually be coming true some of the story that's in there so anyway that's one to look out for but my big review this week is the return of a rogue trooper in 2000 AD so um, I'm not a regular reader of 2000 AD I just tend to pick it up now and again or pick up you know collected editions of stories rather than trying to follow a story week by week in this but I thought I'd pick this up because um, it has the return of a rogue trooper who is a, a long-running character um, who's been in the, in the 2000 AD for probably 40 plus years um, originally um, written by Jerry Finlay Day um, but uh, what's interesting here is we've got Patrick Goddard on art and Garth Ennis on the story um, as always there are um, several stories um, in this uh, week's 2000 AD there are five stories there's a Judge Dredd story as there always is particularly good one a little one-off story um, about these sort, sort of uh, memorials or shrines the kind of thing that we might see at a roadside you know where there's been a victim of a crime or an accident um, and Judge Dredd is going around um, destroying these because they're against the law um, of course um, these things have been cropping up all over Mega City 1, not just on um, Judge Dredd's beat. So um, there's a wee bit of a debate between the judges about what they should be doing about this. Um, and it's a good wee story. It's, it feels like a real classic uh, Dredd story. Also back in action is Durham Red. So this uh, Durham is uh, again a long running character uh, for originally from the Strontium Dog series. So she was a search destroy agent. Uh, with mutant powers, basically she's a vampire, so she's um, a pretty nasty piece of work. Um, she's in prison currently, um, but she's going to get out because people need her for a special mission. So that, that was pretty good. Um, I enjoyed that one. The Order is a fairly um, long-running series for, for a while. Um, it's about kind of historical char characters um, trying to save the Earth from um, mysterious beings. Um, I've not really gotten into this story at all. I've read one or two of it and I, I don't really get what's going on um, because I haven't really been in there from the start. Quite interesting looking artwork, quite painterly artwork. Um, and you know, lots of action in there, but not really my thing at all. Uh, this is also a new story to me, uh, Enemy Earth. So basically a future Earth where um, nature has risen up against humans. Um, so we've got plants and animals kind of attacking humans. Again, don't really know much about that story, but it looks quite interesting. You know, very nice, colourful um, artwork. Very reminiscent of Jamie Hewlett, I would have to say. Um, very much looks like his type of artwork, but it is um, an artist called Luke Horseman on that. With the uh, story by Kevin Scott. And that takes us to the last story in the prog. Uh, Rogue Trooper. Blighty Valley, as Blighty might suggest, it might have something to do um, with England and a past war. 
Um, so uh, a welcome return to see a rogue trooper back. So a genetic infantryman fighting on uh, the planet of New Earth sometime in the future where the North and the South are at constant odds with each other. And uh, Rogue Trooper is this blue-skinned infantryman who is genetically modified to be able to live in kind of the, the gaseous, uh, terrible kind of hellscape of New Earth. Um, and he's aided and abetted by his three um, electronic chums, um, his helmet, his gun and his backpack, um, who all used to be a genetic infantryman, but they're uh, memory chips can be taken out on their death and plugged into other devices um, with the idea that they could then be plugged into new bodies at some point in the future but that's never really happened um, so in this story what's happening is basically there's this kind of black hole kind of wormhole that is used for transportation between different places um, and it has reached a point very close to new earth so it cycles round um, and it's reached this point that it's very close to the planet of New Earth um, and that apparently brings um, unusual things so strange things happen when that occurs um, and what is happening here is um, Rogue discovers um, some soldiers who look remarkably like um, German soldiers from perhaps World War II um, and then spoilers, sorry folks but he also runs into some British infantrymen as well. Okay, so what is going on here? Is it a bit of time travel perhaps going on? Not entirely sure, but it certainly caught my attention. Hey, it's Garth Ennis that's writing this, so you know, we expect it's probably going to be quite a good story, and he does like his um, war stories, so perhaps he's going to mash up a few kind of genres within that, that uh, genre itself. Okay, so intriguing to see what's happening here, and I'll probably pick up the next few uh, progs of uh, 2000 AD just to follow this story in particular. So, uh, the Durham Red one was pretty good, um, and I'm intrigued to see what's going to happen there. Okay, thanks very much. Hope that's been enjoyable. It's been certainly enjoyable for us. I'm absolutely hammered. Uh, really, really amazing beer. Got to speak to a folk from Alchemy. I've been calling them Alchemy for fucking months, right? Alchemy and Broughton and um, also obviously Speyside Brewery. Um, their lager was incredible. Um, they do a, 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 an IPA called Space Cadet, which was also great. I also got to try a wee bit of the heavy. Um, we'll hopefully be spending a lot more time with these three breweries and I hope you've enjoyed interviews. And um, we'll catch you next week. Next week we've got Alan from the Sentinel comic. Hopefully we'll have Ed as well. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining us and um, speak to you soon.